Okay, uh, welcome back. In the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the different types of packages that are typically available in the medical device manufacturing industry. Um, so, it, traditionally, there's been um, a pouch pack, blister packs, uh, flow wrap packaging, and these multi compartmental trays. Um, and the, the cartons then can be used uh, more often in secondary packaging, sometimes in primary packaging. Uh, but I'll Okay, so blister pack packaging. Uh, these are what you would commonly see if you buy a pack of paracetamol, tablets, norfins, um, and, you, and you pop the pill out uh, through a foil back in. So that, that's blister pack. So the, the top layer, uh, or what's called the bottom web here, is usually a hard plastic casing. It, it's uh, transparent and you can see the contents. And uh, these could be solid or flexible. They're usually some sort of polyethylene, PVC or polypropylene. Um, and then on the, uh, the, the, the top web, as it's called uh, down here, you could have Tyvek, uh, so that, that should have a little uh, copyright symbol. So uh, Tyvek is a uh, it's a, uh, a type of, of breathable uh, paper, but it acts as a ster sterile barrier. It's very, very tightly woven. It won't allow uh, microbes uh, through it because it, 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 the weaves are too small to allow any bacteria enter. Um, so another or a me other medical device type paper is on the bottom. Um, so you can break through that paper when you're breaking your medical device out of the blister pack. Um, so they're usually used, used uh, made using a thermo or vacuum formed technology. So using heat uh, or vacuum to mold the, the top hard plastic. And there's different types of machinery. There's a multi-vac or a tiramat machine um, that again are, are copyright, um, but they, uh, they produce these blister packs. Uh, so they're very strong and they're resistant. You've got high visibility of the product. You get a quality image, um, um, but the, expense, the materials are expensive, so they need to be utilised uh, sparingly. So you would use blister packing when you want to protect the product. Uh, pouch packing, then, is one of the more traditional methods available, and it's still in, in common use. Uh, so these are examples of, of, of pouch packs here. Uh, these would be, these are holding um, some sort of, of saline or, or, or an isotonic solution. Um, they could have a Tyvek or a metal, medical grade paper backing, like the blister packs. Um, the top web is a, is a copolymer. Uh, it's very compact, and there's low-cost options available. It doesn't offer as much uh, product protection, uh, but it's cheaper to manufacture. Uh, it's more flexible. It might be easier to store. So there's very simple sealing equipment. It's a lightweight product. They're used to house lightweight products, and it's easy to dispose of. Uh, and this is a... Um, just a freeze I, I took of, of a YouTube showing a pouch packing in operation. So you can see uh, this um, here, the bad arrow. Um, so the, this this is the uh, the packaging material. Um, it's been filled with the liquid, um, and here um, the machinery is is clamping it shut at either end to, to, to provide a seal at either end of the pouch packaging. So uh, very simple to manufacture. So flow wrap packaging then is uh, very commonly used as well. It has good functionality and ease of automation. You can have high volume applications for high speed packaging. Um, the sealing equipment is expensive, so there is a high initial capital cost, uh, but then you can have large volumes and high through, throughput, which will uh, mitigate the costs in the long run. It's very expensive to, inexpensive to run when it is running. And here's a typical flow wrapping machine. Uh, so you have, it's, it's like a, a big um, roll of, of cling film uh, on one end and in another roll over here. Um, the product moves along on, an, on a conveyor belt and um, it is laid onto the lower uh, layer of packaging and then the upper layer gets clamped down onto it like that. Okay, um, 
It can be fragile and power to blister depending on the choice of materials, uh, but you can lay a lot of products on that conveyor belt um, and uh, get a high throughput with flow packaging. And the last top I'm going to talk about are compartment trays. So they look a little bit like the blister packs, except uh, that the whole uh, package is, is the same material. Uh, these could be thermoformed trays. So they, they look something uh, like this, um, which you have your device into. Uh, there's a specific type called clamshell packaging, which are these ones I have a picture of here. They contain a hinge that opens up. And you would see these in, in common consumer goods like headphones and batteries and things like that are, are, would, might be put in a clamshell package. Um, might be very difficult to open, but you get very good product protection. Um, so generally a, a polyethylene perphthalate material or polycarbonate, which is a hard plastic, is used for these compartment trays. Okay, so that rounds up the section on, on packaging. So just to, uh, know the different types, maybe the advantages of one type over another type, and, uh, and, and a bit, have a basic concept of how they're manufactured. Okay, thank you.